Good morning, guys. How's everybody over that way? Doing good. Thanks for joining us. Um, we, we were talking on Monday. It felt like Christmas morning for you guys over the weekend, just arm after arm after arm. And then last night, we got a chance to see Cole Henry. W- what's been What's been your overall evaluation of your pitching staff here four games into the season? Well, you know, as, as you look at uh, at the weekend, and, and I thought there were a lot of good things, especially when you're uh, getting some young players in the game and and giving them their first opportunity to toe the mound at the box i mean that's uh that can be an eye-opening experience and so you want to see how guys kind of handle that and i thought for the most part uh was some really good things uh that were accomplished and i thought guys handled themselves uh very well for the first weekend so much good to get to. Let's start with your Friday night guy in Zach Hess. He's your veteran. Um, you bring him back for your ace. Uh, obviously, he struggles there in the opener. H- how do you coach him after that, and what were your thoughts on his performance? Well, I think that would be the first one to tell you that, uh, you know, that's not up to Zach Hess's standards. I mean, he, he sets himself uh, in a way that he is our he's our go-to guy. I mean, the staff is, is built around – Zach Hess, and uh, when you put a guy on Friday night, um, you know, the expectations are very high to start the weekend off right, and I know that Zach is ready to get back there on Friday night and uh, and do his thing, and I feel very confident in Zach. There's nobody that prepares more than this kid, and uh, so he's going to go back out and, and tighten some things up, and, and uh, he'll be ready to take the ball on Friday night and get us off to a good start, and um, so we're, I, I'm really, really excited to, to get him back out there. Looking forward to hear what you have to say about your next, your, your next two guys and Landon Marso and Jaden Hill, um, because of their performance over the weekend, obviously Hill was named SEC freshman of the weekend. And Marso said that he was discouraged with his performance because he had walked three. Um, but he looked fantastic out there on Saturday as their coach. What did you see from them? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, taking Landon, uh, if, if you watched, you know, here's a young guy again, first first outing in college baseball, and and just the the poise and the presence, um, it really stood out beyond his years, um, and that's one of the things that we knew uh, as him coming in that that's something that he's he's always had as a as a young pitcher, and he took it out on his in his outing, and I think the thing that uh, his ability to pitch in some great pitching counts, and, and obviously you see his stuff, and he's a guy that has a three-pitch mix. Uh, you know, that, that allows you to, to do some very, very good things in a game when you're able to, to throw three pitches for strikes. Uh, and, and as you alluded to, him talking about that he wasn't real pleased because he walked three guys. That's what sets him apart because yeah. he's not settling for mediocrity, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so I thought he just was outstanding and, and taking us um, through that ball game. Now you look at Jaden uh, and his start. Again, a young poise pitcher. Uh, just, uh, again, he, threw, he filled the strike zone up with uh, – Really, if you look at his stuff, he had the great fastball. His slider was really a put-away pitch. And his changeup, which is one of his best pitches, he really didn't have that on the weekend. So that tells me a lot about a pitcher. When you really go out there and you don't have your full, full arsenal, yet you can go out and be very productive and take the team deep in the game. So uh, I was very pleased with both of those young men and, and how, they, uh, how they handled their first start. I think that might be the quote that lives from this interview. Jaden Hill didn't have his stuff from Alan yeah. Dunn on Sunday. Well, and, 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 and one, one, one more quick one, Coach Dunn, on, on Hill. He was asked after the game, that breaking ball, is it a curveball, a slider, a slurve? He had a great quote. He says, quote, I have no idea. It breaks and they miss it. So you're calling it a slider. Is it, is it officially a slider? Well, you know what? It, it, you know, the, that pitch, you could go to ten different people and they're going to call it probably – two or three different things. You know, it, it's it's the mentality of how you're throwing that pitch and the, and the action that you get on it. Um, and I don't really want to confuse a pitcher with it. I, I want and, and I think Jake has the right concept. You know what? I know how we want to throw it. I'm going to try to execute that pitch, and whatever it does, that's how we're going to – when the catcher gives me the finger, that's what I'm going to throw. So he, that that's a 
keep it simple sometimes, yes, you know. Sir. And uh, so it, it, it was very, very uh, solid for a put-away pitch, no doubt. We're talking to the pitch master himself, Alan Dunn, here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 94.7, ESPN. And uh, the bullpen last night, Coach, was excellent. Um, that Beck to Fontenot to Peterson combo, is that a combo that you think Tiger fans are going to see a lot this year? You know what? I was very pleased, again, that, that we were able to uh, to get those guys in those roles last night. Because, as you know, as you try to manage a game, you know, you look at uh, where you are and who you think is going to be the best matchup sometimes. Um, and I think we were able to, to, to manage that game and getting those guys in those roles. So, uh, obviously, things the game will change. You have a plan going in, and, and sometimes, hey, the, the matchups are you're going to flip it sometimes. So, um, I think that stuff is still in the early stages. But those guys are definitely guys that we relied on last year. They've got experience. They've been in those roles. And uh, I thought last night I was uh, very pleased with all three of those guys in doing the things that they did, and uh, that gives us uh, um, gives us some strength at the back end of the bullpen. Hated to see tonight get washed out, Coach, because wanted to see more of Eric Walker after what he looked like on uh, on the weekend. What have you made of his comeback and where he is now? Uh, one of the things that was just uh, so exciting for me was to see him run out on that mound. Yeah. You know, having not seen him in so long, you know, you know, obviously for us as a team, but I tell you what, more important for that kid. I mean, any times you come back from injury, you, you really don't know, hey, if you are going to pitch. Yeah. And to get out there, that was just that, – that, that's a that's a great uh, feel-good story, I guess. But then to go out there and watch him be the Eric Walker in terms of how he pitches. And, again, uh, here's a guy that his stuff is still getting back to the level that it was before he was injured. Um, so we're still working through those things, and but the thing that that hasn't changed is his again his demeanor, his ability to uh, take con- um, control of himself on the mound, know who he is, um, and execute. That's that's what he's always been a pitchability guy, and uh, so we continue to get his stuff at that level. Um, Eric Walker is such a huge part of what we're trying to do, so we want to continue to give him opportunities and and build him up and and uh, help let him take us uh, deep in games. And, and so I'm very, very excited for him to be back with us. Todd Peterson hit 98 last night, Coach. He was the story or one of the stories of, of last year down the stretch. He seems like he's playing with a lot of confidence. What's the ceiling on him? Well, I think uh, you, you hit it right there. The confidence level, and I think we all saw that from the second half of last year. I mean, he was put in that closer's role. He embraced that role. His, his demeanor and his makeup is perfect for that role. Now, you got to come in and execute. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the, the, the situation getting those last three out, uh, as we all hear in, in baseball, those are the last uh, – the hardest to get sometimes. But, again, he's embraced this role. And, uh, you know, you talk about his stuff, which was really dominating last night. But for, for me, what stood out uh, – so much was not only was the stuff very good, but he pounded the strike zone. And when you take that stuff and you're strike one, strike two, there's a lot of really good things that can happen when you do that. And I think that's a testimony to him staying within himself, pitching with really good stuff. That's a great combination. Last one, Coach. We'll get you out of here. Everything good with McHale and his rehab up to this point? You know, we're, we're, yeah, we're still we're – still, uh, you know, trying to get Mikel to to uh, take that next step. You know, we, we, we take some steps and then maybe go back a little bit. But I, I'm feeling really confident uh, with that. Uh, but we're going to take our time. You know, that we, we again, Mikel was such a big part of last year, had a phenomenal year, and, uh, and we need him to, to be healthy and able to go in and pitch and do the things that he can do. And, and that, again, you, we get him back, that's just another yeah. uh, weapon in that bullpen. And you, you you can never have too many weapons, I assure you. You got a great-looking staff, Coach. Looking forward to watching this group develop. Thanks for the time this morning. Hey, appreciate you guys having me on, and have a great day, and uh, look forward to seeing everybody out at the box. Yes.